Welcome to Chicago Theater Review. For the first time in about four or five months, Gail and I are together, and we are in Evanston, Illinois, at Von Ortho Puppets. Correct. And Gail is going to do the introductions because she's the one that found you and knows all about you. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, so a friend of mine, Paul, was telling me he's like, you got to meet this woman. She's like so cool. I think he did your headshots or something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, we came to the studio, and I just thought it was so neat here. And so um, I decided I had to come back and do a show. So this is Cynthia, I'm going to say it right, Von Orthal. Right. And she is a puppet puppeteer. She makes mm -hmm. the puppets. She does puppet shows. But we're going to find out all about that. So we're in the studio, and it is like I, I have my little puppet here. Hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> and this is, this is Judy. Judy or Jody? We don't know. Right? Judy or Jody. Judy or Jody? I, I'm not sure I remember. <laughs> they don't remember the name. And my puppet is, who's my puppet? Um, this girl is Sylvie, and she's from a show called uh, A White Heron. A White Heron. And I, I'm just learning how to, how to, how to use the... Uh, I'll yeah. just, there we go. Yeah, okay. Now, Thank you. <laughs> besides being a puppeteer, you're yeah. an actress. Yes. You've been on stage in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So you've been at Shakespeare. You've been at a bunch of other little theaters. Mm -hmm. And then somehow you decided, being an actress, you also want to be a puppeteer. Well, yeah, it's interesting. I um, Friends of mine were doing a puppet show years ago, and I thought, oh my gosh, they call themselves actors. That's so dumb that they're doing puppets. But I went, and I fell in love with the art form. It was so beautiful. It was like watching a live Warner Brothers cartoon. And I thought instantly, I changed on a dime. I thought, this is the kind of performing I want to do. You can do so many different things, be so many different characters. And um, I still enjoyed theater and film and commercials and that, but this allows me to do other guys performing. You know, there's the painting, there's the sculpting, there's the directing and choreography. So it's sort of a fuller, uh, much more, um, a bigger art form than just the performing. And then the piece de resistance is that you get to perform with these at the end. Well, you know, when you just mentioned, you're the, you're the complete ensemble for a theater company. So right, you're just, exactly. you have to come up with the idea, mm -hmm. you have to then create your characters, then from that you have to figure out what you're going to do with them, direct them, and then come up with a some type of uh, format, which we found out that you've done formats all over the globe, so you're right. internationally well known. Yeah, exactly. We've performed in Guatemala, and in Brazil, and in Bolivia, and in England, we've performed, you know, several different places. And um, the beauty of this is that you can work with teams of people. So depending on the show, you can work with two people or you can work with 20 people. And a lot of the international events will include people from um, overseas. So you get to work with a whole other group of people as well. So this is cool. So we're going to meet a couple more of her, her puppets um, in a little while. But before we, we really dive into the puppet thing. I just want to say that, you know, I'm so I'm sitting at home the other night and I'm like, oh my God, Cynthia's in my living room yet again. And <laughs> she she did a commercial for Lyrica. Right. And you were telling us that it it was on a couple of years ago and they brought it back. Right. And right. this commercial is on all the time. It's a very cool commercial. You've also done um, a billboard, um, a Yes, a, an ad for uh, ad for um, um, people who are suffering from their house being foreclosed on. There's a government agency you can call one eight hundred hope for uh, information on how to try to save your home. And this is like all over this billboard. I did see one in Chicago as well, yeah. but it's all over. It's all over. And um, yeah, the first time I saw it, I was driving through uh, Iowa. And it's this giant billboard <laughs> in the middle in of the cornfield. Corn and I was like, oh, man. Oh, God, that's uh, me. Yeah. There you are. Yeah. Yeah. And it was not Field of Dreams, was it? Yeah, it was not Field of Dreams. <laughs> now, you're doing this show in January. You're getting ready for a show. Yes. We're going to do, we're going to be part of the International Puppetry Festival, which is coming to Chicago in January. And we're going to be performing one of our shows called A White Heron. And that is going to be at Lynx Hall. And this actually because I did get a press release on this. Uh, this is the International Puppet Show where all these different, um, what you, I'm, I'm gonna say puppet people, I know that's not the correct mm -hmm. term, puppeteers are gonna be performing at all different locations. Yes. Um, all throughout the city. Right. And we talked about it, like Navy Pier, like Museum of Contemporary Art. Mm -hmm. um, looks like a very, very cool show. And actually we'll have some information on the website and then I'll probably send somebody out to see it as well. 
Um, so it's, do they do this at different locations every year, this international show? Well, this is the first year it's back here. There used to be an international festival years ago, like in ought to, you know, two, <laughs> ought to. <laughs> uh, but like in 2000, there was Puppetropolis, and there were other international theater events that included puppetry. But this is the first one in many, many years that's international. And um, so it's very exciting. There's going to be puppeteers from all over the world renowned, wonderful performers. That is so, if you're a puppeteer, I guess that's kind of like what you strive for, right? Sure. To be part of that? Absolutely. I mean, really and to cool. have all of these performers coming here so that, you know, everyone will be exposed to this amazing art form from all over the world. And it really is amazing. So I want to tell you, so first of all, you make these puppets. Right, right. You make these. Puppets. And the, the, tell me again what the term is for those puppets. It's they're These called, are called a boon raku puppet, which basically means a full figure doll. So there are rods everywhere so that they can move pretty realistically. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's as opposed to a marionette, which of course is the ones that have the strings. Um, which you all know from the sound of music. Exactly. <laughs> from marionette. Yeah. And we do make all different kinds of puppets, but mostly we, we love this art form, um, the Japanese art form. And it gives us much more flexibility as far as movement. And because I work with puppeteers uh, fairly quickly, our rehearsals will come up fairly quickly. It's easier to learn this, perhaps, than, than a marionette would, which would take a little bit more time in a rehearsal process. Because I've learned know. this in about three seconds. And you're I doing think fabulous. I'm a, I think I'm a master puppeteer Yeah, already. we're going to call you for the international There we go. Course. I think yeah, I'm going to be part of it. A marionette <laughs> has strings for every part of their body, so you have to learn all that. Yeah. And then, because yeah. you actually are with the audience. So, and with a marionette, right. you don't see the people behind the set. Right. And with this, you actually see the people. Yeah, you see the people, mm -hmm. and uh, many times we will dress in black so that the puppets are uh, stand out in front of us. You can see the performers moving with them. That's kind of the beauty of that art form, too. Right. Your focus, because the puppets are so much co more colorful, your focus is the puppet, but you can still see the performers moving and the choreography behind it, and that's sort of another um, wonderful thing about the art form. There was a play, to, a musical, a couple of years ago that came out, Avenue Q. Avenue and Q. Avenue Q mm -hmm. was the one that actually yeah. did, instead of using marionettes, they used this form, mm -hmm. and the person was on stage. Right. And so you got to see, interact with both. Right, and, exactly. Yeah. And that was kind of a split focus, so they used hand puppets, sort of like the, the Muppet-type puppets mm -hmm. and right. rod puppets, and there were two characters. So it was just a whole other way to interpret puppetry, which was really cool. So so how do you how do you make a puppet? So also, also I want to mention too, because you do classes. Yeah. Which I think is so cool. I was just saying that with winter coming, um, my friends and I were looking for something to do. We were thinking of doing like the bottles of Bottega where you paint. But now I'm like, boy, that would be kind of cool. To Come take a puppet puppets. class. So you do these eight-week sessions. Yeah, eight-week sessions. For adults. For adults. Kids, you said you go out to the schools. Mm -hmm. So I say I want to learn how to make a puppet, so I come to your class. And right. How does this process all begin? Um, you first sketch you, something? you sketch something. The first, uh, the first three hours of the course is uh, in the evening or the afternoon, whenever the class is. You have the opportunity to sketch out your design and it, your head of the puppet. And um, if you know more about what it's gonna be, you can sketch out that as well. And uh, it doesn't have to be a perfect drawing, it's just an idea before you get to the clay. Then we'll move to the clay the next session, and we'll give you a few sessions to carve, and we'll do demonstrations and teach you about carving the head out of clay. And then we move to a mache process, once that's done... So this starts with clay? It starts with clay. Okay. As you can see, she's yeah. got a clay model oh, there's right one here behind. for us. That's the beginning oh, of here. it. Here, I can take it out here. Okay, here. so that's the beginning of it. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at this, I can't see this being done in one class. This would be like several. Well, it depends, too. We would usually let the students have two class periods to carve. And if they felt like they needed a third, We'd give them a third, but we have a limited amount of time, and so because they got, it so they got to come up with something simpler than and the detail, like in this, is well, just it, unbelievable. It, they can have something that is complicated, but they just have to be able to be pushed to go a little further and a little faster. That's the 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 wonderful thing that I love about teaching this is that so many people will come and say. I'm not an artist. I don't know. I was just going to say that because I, I took a pottery this. class and I was like, I, I'm not an yeah. artist. And they said, 
You don't have to be. You'll be amazed at what you do. Amazed at and how. And that's what's so cool about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. And they are, they always amaze themselves. They amaze me by what they're able to come up with just with being, you know, given that encouragement to continue. So about three or two or three sessions with the sculpting. And then we move on to the mache, which is this. Which, by the way, she mentioned that mache is not flour and water and water like it used to be because well we don't use it because uh, mice are attracted to it because it's food so we will use a wood um, based clay I mean uh, glue with wallpaper paste so that you keep the mice away so it goes from the clay to the to the mache to the mache and then uh, to the painting and then it takes a life of its own and then it takes a life of its own and the clay will start to speak to you This is where it sounds a little bit funny, but once you go from your drawing to the clay Does that sound funny to you? Okay. They love it, <laughs> but the clay will start to speak to you about what it wants to be, you know mm -hmm. um, It's like Michelangelo looking at the rocks, you know, and the marble saying I'm waiting for the marble to tell me what's inside now, if a person wants to take your class, how do they find out about it? Well, they can come to our website, www.vonorthalpuppets.com, and uh, they can find out about classes there. We do them four times a year. Again, it's an eight-week course, so it's a commitment, but it's a commitment to yourself. And how many hours? It's about six hours a week. Okay. And, um, and yeah, and by the end, you have a beautiful puppet that's your own creation. And out of the 20 years I've been doing this class, there is not one person that has created the same puppet. Because really? everybody has their own creative spirit. Do you find that people create puppets like something they know, like a family member, or, people or is make, it just from their wild imagination? Or? A lot of times people come and say, you know, I want to make a praying mantis. You know, we had this woman who was a scientist and she wanted to make a praying mantis. We have people who want to make mythology characters. We have people who want to do fable characters. We have people who want to do characters from history. It just ma it doesn't matter. It, it, I want to do one of our director, times. Ed. Is that possible? That's possible. Anything okay. is possible. Okay, good. I'm going to yeah. get a picture. Anything is possible. <laughs> so do they, so let me ask you a question. Do these kind of become like your little babies afterwards? Like, do you they, just yeah. have like an attack? I know. I'm kind of getting attached getting to this attached one already. Yeah. yeah. Well, I kind of want to take her home with me. I know. I know. <laughs> well, people say, uh, what's your favorite one? And don't I don't have a favorite one. It's like your children. Even if you do, you don't say it. Um, but uh, but no, because they are so different. Yeah. So each one is a musical instrument, really, and it, it plays differently. It's made differently. The, the detail is amazing. She was saying like this one has a uh, what did we say it's called? Ro 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 uh, Rosario. Rosh 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 Yeah. Yeah. That that skin thing. Got a thing. skin condition. Got a skin condition and some kind of. And, Pick up those glasses a little yeah, bit there, honey. Yeah, your so glasses are falling. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Okay, we're back, and Cynthia's brought down some of her puppets, and now Hello. introduce Hello. this one to us. <laughs> uh, well, I don't really have to introduce her. Shoot. Yeah, I can do it myself. My yeah. name is Gay Martini, and uh, I'm mother of seven wonderful kids. They look great for seven kids. Thank you. And I love your eyeshadow. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, you know, a lot of my kids, uh, well, you know, I do a lot of running around. I mean, with the kids. <laughs> but I'm, uh, anyway. She'll be at Zadie's uh, right exactly. uh, She's coming to my house on a Saturday night. Anyway. Now, where's, where's she from? You must have used her. She is, she is uh, from our show, Berwyn Avenue. That's right. I lived it. I lived on Berwyn Avenue for all my life. And now I'm, you know, stuck here in Evanston, for God's sake. Bring me back to the city! Yeah, right. Really? Right? You belong no, in the city, honey. Right? Uh, no, I love Evanston. The people are wonderful. <laughs> oh, yeah, they are. People are wonderful. And who does your hair? Because that is... Oh, thank you very much. I do it myself. Wow. This show in the, that was in the... It was called Berwyn Avenue, and it took place um, in the 70s, and it was sort of a retrospective of two families that lived in Andersonville. Are still living there now. Are they really? I don't know about the show though, so don't tell me. Okay, we won't. Don't, don't worry. The four people that see the show now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, that night there were five. I was floored. So, before we run out of time, we, have, wanna, we I, still have time, I right? Go through <laughs> this is so much our fun. 
And okay. Then, so now you also do children's classes yes, and adult classes. Yeah. I don't Let's go mention, to the children's classes, though. Let's mention your husband really quick okay. because he does the music for you. And I saw him this summer at Ravinia. He's in a group called Koi Dog Pondering, which actually they're, they're, they're known all over, but I actually had seen them a million years ago in Milwaukee. They play Ravinia a lot, right? Yeah, yeah, and they do. And I believe they've got shows coming up at the City Winery in sometime yeah. in November. And they're December. a very big, like, local band. They yeah. have a huge following. Mm -hmm. And by the way, they're really good. I didn't know what to expect, but they were really cool. They have really cool music and a huge following. So her husband, Frank. Uh, my husband's name is Paul. Paul. Oh. And <laughs> this afraid. is Frank. This is Frank. <laughs> Not that I wouldn't want to marry There's Frank. There's another I'll Paul. Frank. <laughs> okay, lots of Paul. I'll take uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, sorry. Paul Mertens, and he uh, plays with, with Boy Dog Pondering, and he also is the music director for Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys. Oh. Or formerly of the Beach Boys. Okay. And uh, and he does our music. That's the most important thing we yes. remember, is he does music for our shows. Well, what we should do is use some of his music for our show at great. the ending for great. this one. So Fantastic. People, so people can get an idea of what his music sounds yeah. like. Yeah. So we have the um, International Puppet Festival coming up in January. Do you have a date yeah. on that in January? I believe it's January 18th and 19th. Uh, two days yes. Later. That'll be on uh, our, our website, too. Yeah. The festival, I think, goes for a week or two weeks. Oh, okay. Our shows are two nights. And then you have any judging in this festival, like they come up with a winner, or you know, I don't know. I would, I would hope that not because okay. there's so I don't many think different. There is. I don't think there is. I think it's yeah. just like a showcase thing. Kind I of think thing. it's a showcase. There's yeah. so many different art form. I mean, in the art form itself, there's so many different varieties of puppets that I think it'll just be wonderful for people to see um, just what's out there because people always think that this art form is dying, but it actually is just. It's always there. It's, it's just always there. It's just, you don't see it as often, but then when yeah. you, but if you go to enough theater, you see these little things, yeah. and I see it more with children's theater, too, now. Yeah. But yeah. one of the big theaters in Chicago is Red Moon Theater, um, which also did that um, that great Chicago fire disaster over the Right, exactly. And we've done <laughs> some work summer. with, with Red Moon, too. We've, but we've they're, the big, they're the big... Um, they're the big thing. They do a lot of spectacles, Puppet theater. a lot of puppets. But mm -hmm. um, I think they're. But but I think I've seen some stuff at Shakespeare too as well with mm -hmm. puppets. So mm -hmm. it's kind of all over. So between the, hi, hello, how are you? Good. Hey, <laughs> fresh. Okay. Well, I'll watch out there. <laughs> so between that and then these classes. Now these classes intrigue me because again, mm -hmm. you know, winter's coming, and if you're looking for something to do, I just say like grab a group of friends. And uh, is yours like a wine thing too, or is it absolutely? We have beverages and snacks. Oh. That's the that's the. So you can like bring your own. Like, you can bring your own. Absolutely. So, so I think that is. Making your puppet so exactly, we like do this take the carving know. knives away from people okay, if they've had a little too okay, much. Okay, but that's okay. But that is like so much fun. So, yeah. I mean, you know, God, come and take a puppet class. How cool mm -hmm. to, like, make your own puppet. And then do these do these adults do a little show at the end with their Yeah, puppets? we always do a uh, experimental evening night where they get to, to perform because the difference between a doll and a puppet is a puppet must perform at least one time. So at the end of the class, the final thing is um, an evening of performance, and we open up the doors to friends and family, and we have, you know, more beverages, and people get to do more a wine. five to ten minute piece or a three minute piece. They do piece. them individually, or they, they do, do them? In, they can do them together if they want to. That is, that's cool. Make puppets now, is together. Is everything done in here, or you, you have a bigger studio, don't you? Well, for an event like that, we will rent out a space. Oh, we okay. do all the classes here, and then we rent out a space for the, for the performances of the students. Okay. So do you find when you're doing these classes, is it people that come like individually, or is it like groups mm -hmm. of like friends? That, you know, I have, Is it all different? It's all different walks of life. We've had people in their 80s. We've had kids 16. We've had and everything in between from scientists, doctors, artists, people who are, you know, their kids are gone and now they're empty nesters and they're like, I've always wanted to do an art form. And then we have people who say, I just want to challenge myself because exactly. yes. I've, I can, I'm not an artist. And they are absolutely amazed by how wonderful their stuff turns out at the end of the, sh end of the, the workshop. And, you, and again, you only do this four times a four year. Four times a year. Yeah. And for eight week classes, but you know what? This is something really people should sign up for. I think, Frank, we're, I think we're gonna do this. Right? You guys, you have to, you have to come. I know we do some stuff here. Most of the kids stuff, we go to the schools. We go to the libraries, we go to the schools. Um, occasionally, if there's a school in the area, they'll come to the studio. Um, on weekends, 
we we used to, when we lived in Ravenswood where there was more people walking around right from the mm-hmm. L, you know, from the metro and stuff, we'd have the roll door open so that families could come in if they were just walking by and say, hey, would you like to make some puppets? Come on in. But normally we'll go to the schools. They'll hire us to do workshops. Oh, cool. and What's great about that's, so that's the first thing they cut. Exactly. You have to cut the budget. You cut music yeah. and art. Mm-hmm. It's like the two major things. Right. So they have you know the PTAs and the parents that put they pull in funds or they do fundraising so that they can bring in the music or the art or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, for instance, mm-hmm. we've got um, many workshops coming up in December. A lot of them they want to do like holiday events for the kids. So they'll mm-hmm. this will be a special treat for them. We'll come in for two days. Mm-hmm. They'll create a story with their teacher. We'll come and help them build the puppets, and then they'll put on the performance for the school. That so, is like seeing something that mm-hmm. you well, yeah. that you did, and then the finished product is very. Now, start to finish. How long does it take to create a puppet then? Um, again, it depends on which one. Something like I know, this. Some of these are so <laughs> intricate. I can see it taking forever. Yeah. Well, what this these kind of puppets that you see here, they probably take about a month to create because part of it is that the the sculpting process can go quickly. Maybe in a couple of days you've got the head finished, two or three days. But then there's the macheing process. We do five layers of a really thick and heavy wood glue um, and wallpaper paste. And um, it's good to not use flour and water like, like we did as a kid, yeah. only because mice are attracted to that because it's food. So we do really, yeah. We do wood glue and wallpaper Ooh. paste. And you don't want to find a head with little holes in it. Exactly. <laughs> so wow. So those with fabric shops too. Price of fabrics has gotten expensive. How yeah. Do, I, yeah. People used to buy fabric yeah. that they would make clothes because they couldn't afford to buy red. Well, now right. with the price of fabric, you can't yeah. afford to make the outfits yeah. sometimes. And I'm very fortunate the, that because I've been doing this for so long that people know that I need fabric. So. I'll often get a call from people saying, hey, I've got this whole extra fabric. We made this so-and-so and this and that, and we don't need it anymore. I'm like, I'll take it, you know, because you just never know. When we moved here right. for workshops for kids, we'll bring in right. scraps of fabric for my students here, uh, the adult students. Everything's included in the price. So they can bring in stuff that they would like to, but they can also go through all the bins here and pick. I'm just thinking so, how much fun that would be to take a public class. Now, it's so much fun. How long is the class? So cool. How many weeks is the class? It's eight weeks. Eight weeks. Eight weeks and it's uh, three hours, like on a Tuesday, say it's three hours on a Tuesday and a Thursday, or um, depending on the needs of the class, it's a Tuesday or a Saturday, you know, from 10 to 1. So about six to eight hours a week. And, you, you know, this is a dying... Thing. I mean, I mean, I always thought puppets were made in China, and this I know. over here, and you yeah. actually been doing. They're made here, right? And, and they're made right here. Yeah, in exactly. USA doing... made. Yeah. <laughs> there's not too much competition then for you. Is there? Well, you know, it's funny about about puppetry. It's there's so much theater in Chicago. Is such a great artistic community. All sorts of mediums and music and painting and theater and dance and all of this. Yeah. And once you open that, like puppetry. And it's interesting that it's it's always hooked in with magic. Mm-hmm. You know, you open that door, <laughs> and it's like there's all these people, and you're like, where were you? Where have you been? But then there's this entire community, and it, it ranges from the librarians that make puppets for the libraries and schools to the teachers that have been doing Girl Scouts and puppets, to the professionals who have been doing puppets. You know, like myself. Um, and then the avant-garde, like say, like more of a red moon that does spectacle and right. that kind of a thing. So there's a whole range of of and like those fire things that don't always work. You know, exactly. It, it, exactly. It's actually made me think because over the last few years. Exactly. Well, you know, one of the greatest things is you know they're in all forms of theater, dance. Asked oh. us to build a life-size riding horse. And it was fantastic. Working with them was amazing. Um, they were. I mean, and the crazy thing is, I hadn't worked that much with dancers, but we do our own choreography with puppeteers, so we have our own kind of dance things we need to learn. But man, I came away from that experience going, wow, those kids really know how to dance. You know, animals and stuff, and they come back, and they have bones, and they have shadows from the, from the fire, and they're telling the story of what happened. You know, here comes a thing, a bonk on the head, and oh, there goes Ugh. <laughs> Sorry, Ugg. Um, but anyway. It's so cool. And oh, so kidding. Cute. You the students, the adult students that I have, I always have them draw something on a piece of paper. And then they'll say, I don't know how to draw. Yeah, I'll have them draw like a, a whole session is just dedicated to drawing. 
And uh, again, it doesn't have to be a masterpiece. We're just trying to get you, if you've come in with Alton before, right. then it's going to take too long. Now this is for the adult. What about yeah. for the kids? For the kids, you know, for the kids, we just let them go at it. Be create a puppet for you. <laughs> yes. Awesome. <laughs> and we'll both create I'll, one for you. I'll do I that just, interpretation. I, think right? that that, I just think that that is so neat. I mean, you know, you're right, because... We were talking about that, you know, you sketch something out and then you get to see the finished product. And you know how many times people go, gosh, you know, I should do this, I should do this. Well, you know, don't say I should do this, just do it. Just do you it, know? and it's so much fun. I mean, everybody has a blast. And again, uh, everyone is amazed by what kind of creative juices are inside of them. And perhaps Absolutely. they were told at certain points in their lives that they're not creative and that's stuck. Well, not here. Here, everybody has the opportunity to explore and to bring out what was inside. You know, it's the old thing. It's the person who said, you know, I can't even do a stick figure that can end up making a puppet like this, probably. Exactly. Well, that's my story. When I was in kindergarten, I was told I forgot my crayons. And this is the crazy Andersonville I grew up in. I forgot my crayons. I was put in the corner in kindergarten or first grade. I hated art. So it wasn't until I saw this puppet show after I graduated from college that I knew that I loved art. Isn't that, that's, that's really cool. Yeah. And I think Ed took lots of, our, Ed, our director, Hi, Ed. he took lots of, he went around and. <laughs> he's kind of cute. <laughs> he, he's taken, okay. <laughs> but I think he kind of has a thing for you. He went around and he shot a lot of this because you can't, you have to really like see the footage. You have to be in the studio because the studio is really, really cool. There's puppets all over. There's um, your hair looks beautiful. Thank your you. eyebrow that's so, a little off. Before oh. we go, let's get the website <laughs> one more time. www.vonorthalpuppets.com. I'm going to put it on our website too, and be sure to sign up for the classes and be sure to come out to the International Puppet Festival. And I, I'm just I'm having the time of my life with this. I really I, I really am. How are we doing here? Are we, we are done. We are out of time. I got the finger from Ed. So. Uh, yeah, they got Ed gave us the finger. <laughs> so Thanks, Ed. Thank you very much. Cynthia, thank you for inviting us Cynthia, Frank, Fletcher, um, Gay Martini, Gay. and my friend here. Her name is Sylvie. Sylvie, Sylvie wake up. Sylvie, wake up. Yeah, Sylvie was a <laughs> And Gail, our little puppet friends, we just want to thank you. We want to thank you, Cynthia, for doing this show. It is, this is a really cool studio. This is a really cool art form. And I'm really glad that we came out here today to do this. Thank you both. We'll see you much. both. From Chicago thank Theater you. Review, we will see you next month.